So the remnants of a star that has died, the sun will have a fate such as this, where at the end, its outer layers of gas will escape into space and slowly drift away. The James Webb Telescope just spotted galaxies so big, so early, they shouldn't even exist if the Big Bang timeline is right. This is the kind of space drama that keeps scientists up at night because it's rewriting what we thought we knew about the universe. The James Webb Space Telescope isn't just another space camera. It's humanity's most powerful time machine. Sitting a million miles from Earth at the Lagrange Point L2, it's far from the heat, glare, and distortion of our planet. Its massive 6.5-meter segmented mirror and ultra-sensitive infrared instruments let it see deeper and farther than any telescope before it. Here's the mind-bending part. When JWST takes a picture of a galaxy 13 billion light years away, it's not seeing it now, it's seeing it as it was 13 billion years ago. That's because light takes time to travel, so every deep space image is essentially a snapshot from the past. And JWST's sweet spot is the infrared spectrum, which is perfect for this job. As the universe expands, light from the earliest stars and galaxies gets stretched into longer, redder wavelengths, a process called redshift. JWST was built specifically to detect this ancient, redshifted light. In practical terms, this means JWST can peer back to just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang, capturing the universe's earliest galaxies, stars, and maybe even clues about how the first black holes formed. Have you ever wondered what baby pictures of the cosmos would look like? That's exactly what JWST is delivering. And those cosmic baby photos are far more surprising than scientists expected. And here's where things get wild. Within its first year of observations, JWST spotted something that made astronomers double check their data. Galaxies that seemed impossibly massive, existing way too early in the universe's history. One of the earliest shockers came from a February 2023 AP News report. Scientists using JWST data found six galaxies that appeared less than 600 million years after the Big Bang, yet each was as massive as the Milky Way. That might sound normal until you remember. In the standard cosmological model, galaxies are supposed to take billions of years to grow that big. These weren't sprawling, fluffy galaxies either. They were compact, dense, and packed with stars, so much so that researchers nicknamed them universe breakers. The name says it all. If these measurements held up, they would break our current understanding of how fast matter can clump together in the early universe. Then came MOMZ-14, a galaxy spotted at an incredible redshift of 14.44, meaning we're seeing it as it was just 280 million years after the Big Bang. For context, that's only about 2% of the universe's current age, and yet it's already a mature star-forming galaxy. The problem? The Lambda Cold Dark Matter Model, our best, most tested cosmological framework, predicts that galaxies this massive shouldn't exist so soon. It's like finding a fully grown oak tree in a forest you planted a few weeks ago. Naturally, this triggered a debate. Were we seeing actual galaxy building on overdrive? or was something else messing with our measurements? Just when some headlines started hinting that the Big Bang might be dead, cooler heads in the scientific community urged caution. Sure, JWST was spotting galaxies earlier and bigger than predicted, but astronomy is notorious for tricky interpretations. The challenge is that estimating a galaxy's mass from such a distance is like guessing the size of a city from a satellite photo at night. Brightness can fool you. In our current model, the Lambda CDM framework, galaxies grow gradually. Dark matter pulls gas into gravitational wells, stars form over time, and black holes slowly develop. JWST's early results seem to suggest either that galaxies were forming much faster than expected, or that our measurements were being skewed by other cosmic factors. Some astronomers pointed out that the methods for estimating galaxy mass rely heavily on interpreting light through models, and those models were built using data from telescopes far less sensitive than JWST. If JWST is revealing hidden features, it could mean we need to adjust those models, not throw them away entirely. Others considered alternative physics. Maybe dark matter interacts differently than we think. 
Maybe star formation in the early universe was hyper-efficient due to denser conditions. Or maybe, and this is the scientist's favorite answer, we're simply missing something we haven't thought of yet. Science loves a good puzzle, and this one is especially juicy because it tests the very limits of our models without outright disproving them. That's the beauty here. JDWST isn't killing the Big Bang. It's making us work harder to understand what happened next. It's not moving too fast. If I were to get into the water here and swim across, I'd be able to do that very easily. In the same way, if you're far away from a black hole, you'll be able to get around with just a normal spacecraft without too much trouble and simple propulsion. Then came one of the biggest aha moments of the JWST era so far. Maybe those universe-breaking galaxies weren't as massive as we thought. A study led by Catherine Swarovski at the University of Texas at Austin, using JWST's Cosmic Evolution Early Release Science Survey, SEERS, revealed something sneaky. Some of the brightest, most distant galaxies weren't shining so intensely because of stars alone. They were hiding supermassive black holes at their cores. As matter spirals into a black hole, it heats up and glows brilliantly in X-rays and infrared. To JWST's detectors, this glow can look a lot like the light from billions of stars. If you don't account for it, you might overestimate a galaxy's mass by a huge margin. These tiny, ultra-bright little red dots spotted by JWST were galaxies with active black holes, some likely containing millions or even billions of solar masses. When researchers corrected for the black hole contribution, the galaxy's estimated masses dropped into a range the Lambda CDM model could easily explain. That's not to say the mystery is solved. If anything, it raises more questions like, how did such massive black holes form so soon after the Big Bang? In our current understanding, black holes grow over millions or billions of years, but these early monsters were already in place just a few hundred million years into cosmic history. It's like finding skyscrapers in a town that's barely been built. So yes, some of the mass estimates might have been inflated, but the presence of these ancient black holes still pushes our theories to the limit. Now a tiny bit of asteroid dust is rewriting what we know about the early solar system and about ourselves. And here's where the plot twist kicks in. Some scientists realize that these monster galaxies might not be so monstrous after all. They dug into JWST's light data and found something fascinating. Early galaxies often went through intense starburst phases. Picture this, instead of slowly building stars over billions of years like most modern galaxies, these young universes were going full rock concert mode, pumping out stars in rapid, furious bursts that lasted only tens of millions of years. When a galaxy is in a starburst phase, it's insanely bright. And to us, looking across billions of light years, brightness can easily be mistaken for sheer size and mass. Now here's the kicker, the dust factor. We always assumed the early universe was dustier than it was. Dust normally dims and reddens starlight, making galaxies harder to detect. But JWST's data shows that some of these ancient galaxies were surprisingly clean, with far less dust than expected. Less dust means more light passes through, making galaxies look older, bigger, and more evolved than they truly are. So maybe we're not seeing fully mature giants. We're catching glimpses of baby galaxies in their brightest, most energetic moments. That doesn't mean the early universe wasn't impressive. It was. But it's like walking into a concert during the final chorus and thinking the band's been playing like that for hours. You're just catching the peak of the show. Still, this doesn't answer one burning question. Even if the galaxies aren't as massive as we first thought, how did they get so organized so quickly after the Big Bang? The discovery of an old, dead galaxy is changing how NASA thinks about evolution in space. What are dead galaxies? They've simply stopped making stars. What NASA's really interested in is their shape and color. For shapes, we're comparing elliptical and spiral. Elliptical galaxies are frenzied spheres, while spiral galaxies, like our Milky Way... Okay, now this is the part that messes with my head. JWST has found galaxies with ridiculously tiny cores, some just 80 to 300 parsecs across. For comparison, our Milky Way's core spans thousands of parsecs. Yet these compact galaxies had stellar mass densities comparable to massive elliptical galaxies we see today. 
It's like finding a skyscraper compressed into the footprint of a single family home. The only way to do that is to pack the stars incredibly tightly, meaning these galaxies form stars rapidly and efficiently at their centers. Then there's GS9209, the so-called dead galaxy. Confirmed at a redshift of about 4.658, this thing stopped forming stars just 1.25 billion years after the Big Bang. Let that sink in. The universe was barely in toddler mode, and this galaxy had already lived, evolved, and died. And if that's not enough, GS9209 has a central black hole estimated at around 500 million solar masses. That's a monster for such an early stage. How do you even grow something like that so fast without breaking our current models? The existence of early quiescent galaxies tells us that some cosmic environments were able to burn through star-making material at lightning speed, then shut down completely. That level of rapid evolution is not supposed to happen so soon in cosmic history. Which brings us to an even crazier twist. Not just compact galaxies, but ones hiding colossal black holes, far earlier than we ever thought possible. This part blew my mind all over again. JWST's data revealed something called the Height Black Hole, a massive black hole of about 300 million solar masses sitting inside a tiny galaxy called Kappers LRDZ9. Here's the kicker. This was only 500 million years after the Big Bang. How does a black hole get that big in that short a time? Our standard theories say it should take hundreds of millions, maybe billions, of years to grow a black hole that size. Yet here it was, staring at us from the edge of the observable universe. But that's not the only heavyweight contender. From JWST's Fresco survey, astronomers identified what they're now calling red monsters. These are early, massive, dusty galaxies that were forming stars almost twice as efficiently as later galaxies. Imagine a galaxy in overdrive, turning gas into stars at breakneck speed while wrapped in a shroud of cosmic dust. What's wild is that these red monsters still fit into the Lambda CDM framework, meaning they don't technically break the model. Instead, they show us that the early universe was far more creative and resourceful at building galaxies than we gave it credit for. It's almost like nature was running a galactic sprint before settling into the marathon pace we see later in cosmic history. And if galaxies could do this in just a few hundred million years, what else could have formed out there that we haven't spotted yet? So after all this, galaxies too massive, compact cores, giant black holes, it's fair to ask the big question, does the James Webb Space Telescope debunk the Big Bang? Short answer? Number the core pillars of the Big Bang theory are still rock solid. The cosmic microwave background radiation, still there. The precise ratios of light elements like hydrogen and helium, exactly what the Big Bang predicts. The fact that the universe is expanding, that's still the case. What JWST is doing is challenging our timeline of events after the Big Bang, particularly how quickly galaxies formed, how efficiently stars were born, and how fast black holes grew. Think of it this way. The Big Bang is the what and when of our cosmic origin, but galaxy formation is the how. And right now, JWST is showing us that the how might be far more complex than we assumed. There's a great analogy I saw on Reddit. Galaxy formation is like weather. Cosmology is like climate. Saying the new data disproves the Big Bang is like saying a wrong weather forecast disproves climate change. Exactly. If anything, JWST's discoveries make the Big Bang more exciting because instead of tearing it down, they're adding layers of mystery and forcing us to sharpen our understanding. And in science, that's a win, but not everyone explains it this way. Which brings us to, here's where Neil deGrasse Tyson comes in. You might have seen viral posts claiming Tyson said JWST debunked the Big Bang. Spoiler, there's no credible record of him ever saying that. Tyson has been pretty clear. JWST is a game changer for astronomy, but not because it destroyed our origin story. It's a game changer because it's revealing the fine print of that story in unprecedented detail. He's explained that science works by refining theories, not throwing them away the moment we hit a weird result. Every time a telescope like JWST shows us something surprising, like massive galaxies popping up early, the next step isn't panic, 
its deeper investigation. Tyson also emphasizes the role of humility in science. We shouldn't assume we've got it all figured out, especially when we're talking about events that happened over 13 billion years ago. From his perspective, JWST isn't killing the Big Bang. It's making it stronger by stress testing it. And stress tests are how science evolves. If a theory can survive new data, it's more reliable. If it can't, we improve it. That's the beauty of what we're witnessing. A live upgrade to our understanding of the universe with JWST leading the charge. The James Webb Telescope isn't ending the Big Bang. It's rewriting the opening chapters and we've only just started reading. So, what's your take? Drop a comment, and if you enjoyed this, hit like and subscribe. The next discovery might blow your mind even more.